about to begin. ACC play between these two teams here in Syracuse. Both teams with just one loss this season, and it's Syracuse with the opening tip. And a jumper right away. That's a two just inside the three-point line by Elena Rice. And this is what we're going to see. We're going to see Syracuse really look to push Dumbo. It's going to be an up-and-down game, and how about it? a great start from Rice? Yeah, if you are cutting highlights for this game, you're going to be busy. I can promise you that. As Westfeld <laughs> misses the opening shot for Notre Dame. And Notre Dame's only loss is to South Carolina in the season opener. This is the starting five right now for Syracuse. Fair and Woolley both came over from Buffalo with Coach Jack. And there's Adalgo with the steal. She leads the nation in that category, Asia. It just seems like it comes easy for her. Yeah, six steals a game, Sam. And she's actually averaging more steals than 60 teams in the country. So let that sink in. <laughs> That's incredible. And again, they are moving up and down fast. Fair in the starting lineup tonight. She didn't start in the last game, came off the bench. She's number two in white. And a second chance blocked. How about a third chance for Latham? She gives it to Woolley. And Woolley, another steal for Hidalgo. Two steals already. And that pass broken up. Fair will race down the other end. Up to Woolley. And Syracuse up 5-0. Exactly what we're going to see. I mean, they've, they've bailed themselves out with a few of those turnovers, but up and down, transition, that's what both coaches want to see from their teams. When you score in transition, the odds are always likely in your favor. So right now, Hidalgo's on pass to have 80 steals in this game. So she's had two <laughs> in the first two minutes. I think that's right. North Carolina Public Education Math Skills. And there's a travel by number 22, Kylie Watson. You know, Ivy this year having to negotiate a start to the season without a lot of her stars, even though they've done so well. Obviously, Olivia Miles still out, Sonia Citrone out, Rish is out as well, along with Prosper. But they are number five in the net. Three on the way, it's good by Latham. Whoa, what a start by the Orange. An 8-0 start by the Syracuse Orange at home. Notre Dame says, hang on, we got to talk about this. Two and a half minutes, it's been a jaw-dropping start for Syracuse Asia. No, absolutely. Five points off of two Notre Dame turnovers. This is what the Orange want to do. They want to push tempo. And we've seen a lot of that quick scoring, efficient scoring, balanced attack. A uh, little bit of bad news for Syracuse during the timeout. They took a three-pointer away and made it a two-pointer on that last jumper by uh, Rice. So it's 7 nothing lead instead of 8 nothing. But the point is, it's been a perfect start for Syracuse against one of the best teams in the country. Woolley going for the steal and a foul called. Or wait, I think they just called a jump ball, no foul. Love the aggressiveness of Syracuse as well. They, they have come right at Notre Dame here in the first quarter. Off the inbounds play. First bucket of the game is by KK Gransford for Notre Dame. And Bransford, she's a very versatile player as well. She can play positions one through four. Another key player that coach is going to need to step up. Hidalgo with her third steal, and it leads to a layup. It's just uncanny how she comes up with all these steals. And now Hidalgo going for another one, trying to tie it up. Let's go back to that last steal. It's going to be Notre Dame's ball. Yeah, the pocket picker here. Hannah Hildago, how about it? The freshman against the OG, stealing her <laughs> cookies transition to the bucket. I mean, this is what Hannah Hildago does. That's why she leads the nation in steals. Yeah, that's uh, such a good matchup, her against Fair. They're, again, they're two of the top scorers in the country. Fair can go beyond that. She's the 20th all-time scorer in NCAA history. Jumper off the mark by Marshall. Matt Marshall, 15 for Notre Dame. Into the game for the first time. Willie, turn around. Jumper from the elbow is no good. And the rebound ripped down by Watson. And here comes Notre Dame. Hidalgo for three. 
And this is obviously Hidalgo's first time playing here in the JMA Wireless Dome. It takes a little bit to get used to if you're a shooter. A nice offensive rebound by Wood in the stick back. Wood, a, a tremendous rebounder, has really picked up the slack, especially in the absence of Virgil. How about the fact of, of playing in the dome here, Asia? Does it make a big difference when you haven't played here before? Nice move inside by Watson. Yeah, like the spacing of the arena can be a bit deceptive because there's so much space. It's kind of like you're in a big warehouse, but then like there's these like, you know, area of like bleachers and chairs like right there around you, but there's so much space around the dome. But you know, you just gotta lock in, enjoy the experience, and you know, focus on court. And foul is actually called at the end of that play, and the foul's going to go against Syracuse. Here's a look at that spacing we're talking about. So if you're coming down shooting at that goal, that's a considerable amount of distance between the goal and the, the stands, which obviously you can have a lot of people in here, and it doesn't look as crowded because of how massive this dome is. The foul, by the way, had been on wood. And now a foul on Woolley. As Notre Dame's back to within three. Coach Jack is how she's affectionately referred to. Brought three pillars to this program based on character, academics, and basketball. Nice look inside the West Belt. Misses the layup. Gets it on her second attempt. And I love that look, that lob look. West Belt with great position in the paint. Great catch and able to make it on the on the second opportunity. And West Belt, a, a legacy player for Notre Dame. Her sister Kat is a national champion at Notre Dame as well. Wood has it knocked away by West Belt and it's going to go to Notre Dame. Last touch by the Orange and Notre that Dame such a, back to within one. Sorry, Asia. Yeah, that, sorry, Sam. That was a nice, that was such a nice pass by Rice. If it was a clean catch by Wood, it would have been a wide open layup. Nine to eight. Neither team been able to really break away out here in this opening quarter. Hidalgo, creative shot, doesn't go down. It's going to stay with Notre Dame. Hidalgo coming off a triple double against Western Michigan 26 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists. The third Notre Dame freshman to get a triple double, but it was the highest scoring triple double in Notre Dame history. She's the National Player of the Week, National Freshman of the Week, ACC Player of the Week, ACC Rookie of the Week. Marshall, slow to get up. So she is what we call a phenom, right? And just incredible what she's done as a freshman so far. Yeah, just watching her play, I'm just in awe. Hearing the stats, watching games back, watching her film. She's such an incredible player. And just to be a freshman, so to know how much that she can improve over the course of her career. Nice look inside. Good D by Westbell. Just stripped that right away from Latham. Hidalgo loses it. Nice look up to Fair for the layup. Good play by Syracuse. That was nice. Yeah, that's what Syracuse does, and that's an excellent, excellent, excellent look and find. And how about Fair running, running the floor? The campers will see that play this summer. That was perfect. DeWolf <laughs> knocks down the free throw line jumper. DeWolf coming off an incredible game against Western Michigan. She made five threes. Now she gets the steal. DeWolf with Fair to beat. Double dribbled, a little indecisive about whether to pass or shoot. Well, the reminder, coming up next, we just keep this New Year's Eve quadruple header going. We'll have 19th ranked Louisville taking on Miami, and then we'll cap the day later this evening with number three, NC State and Virginia. And of course, we wish everyone a happy new year. ACC basketball off to a good start as they have uh, 10 teams in the latest top 60 of the net. Oh, what a move inside. Westfield comes out with it. To Wolf, one-handed pass to Hidalgo. Boom! Hidalgo with the three. 
the three and the yell, and she needed that. She needed that three, absolutely. And that's, you know, you talk about Hannah's game. You know, that's where she's so special because we see what she can do at the point guard spot. But when she's playing off the ball, Sam, she is a excellent scorer. And if you're hearing Asia laugh about Hidalgo, it's because Asia's known her since she was a little girl. So <laughs> I, I think you still can't get over the fact that she's not a little girl anymore. But here's a nice play here, right down yeah. the middle. And then DeWolf trying to take that charge. And I called for the foul. That was Rice. But go ahead, Asia. I, I didn't want to interrupt you. you. You've known Hannah since she was a, a little girl, haven't you? Yeah, we went to the same. We went to a uh, pre-K through 12th grade school at Life Center. So just to clarify, because Hannah Hildada did go to Paul the Sixth, but we did go to school together at one point when I was in high school and she was in fifth grade. So always has been a tremendous player. We have, oh my gosh, love bringing back the photos. I'm right there front and center. And actually Hannah Hildago's mom, Tamara, she was one of our assistant coaches. You could see her there on the far right side. And, you know, her family, they're just really great people. They're very into their faith. They're very family oriented. And, you know, they've always been there for me. I was boarding. They had me to the house for holidays. So it just speaks volumes of their family and even Hannah as a person more so than a player. Latham with an and one for Syracuse. Have another look at it here. Latham is just so good with the and one. She's got a big body and so much potential for her in her career. You know, I talked to Coach about it. She's so excited. She told Latham, she said, Latham just has to go out there and have fun right now. You know, run around, have fun as a freshman. Don't worry about too much. Let the game come to you. You're going to develop over time. But when you sit there, when you have fun and you work hard, you are going to have a great career. Yeah, Latham Miss Petro. She was an ACC freshman of the week earlier this year. Nice D by the Orange. It forces a turnover. This is Perkins who's checked into the game running the point right now. She started the last game. Fair came off the bench. Perkins, no one there to take that pass. And a turnover gives the ball back to Notre Dame with a tie score here in the final two minutes of the quarter. I will say this. Both teams love to push tempo, right? But at the same time, I think mentally, I'm talking about like the cerebral, you got to slow it down a little bit. I think they are getting a bit sped up when they're pushing the ball, and that's what's causing those turnovers on both sides. It is interesting, though, and concerning for Syracuse. They have eight turnovers here in the first quarter. DeWolf short on that three. Watson got the offensive rebound, and Notre Dame gets another run at the offense. Marshall pushes it inside for Watson. Gets her miss, misses again. And Nice tenacity by Syracuse to get the ball back. Perkins, baseline. Nice look. Rifled that right into the hands of Saniya Wilson. Yeah, nice pass, right? But then also Wilson, I, you know what I really like about that? She got herself together, gathered, and was able to get up, and that's why she got the make. Wilson on the ACC All Academic team, great student. Another turnover forced by the Orange. Woolley against DeWolf. Got it, no whistle. Woolley has gone green, over. Got it, I'll take it. <laughs> Woolley's gone over a thousand points for her career. She was honored before the game. There's a doggo with the runner. Can't get any stories in Asia. They're running up and down the floor <laughs> so fast tonight. Another thing to point out in this first quarter, you don't see this a lot. All 10 starters scored at some point, and now we've uh, begun to bring in some players off the bench. So that's a good sign for both teams to get the balance. Absolutely. Both teams at their best offensively when they have that balanced attack. Hidalgo with the easy layup. And Hidalgo, three steals in this opening quarter, now with seven points. As we are about to finish the first 10 minutes, post up by Wilson and a foul on Watson. Wilson's going to go to the free throw line with 12.8 seconds left. Watson, a senior from Linwood, New Jersey, transfer from Oregon. Puts Wilson on the line, and substitution coming in for Notre Dame. 
Number 10, Becky Obenma. Becky getting her master's degree at Notre Dame right now. Came from Pepperdine. I like that free throw. Nice stroke by Wilson, who grew up wanting to play at Syracuse. Final 10 seconds of the quarter. Syracuse started out with a big lead. Notre Dame's been catching up ever since. And Marshall ties it. So we are tied 19 all at the Steels. So she got the hard hat award after, after that game. Both these teams, it's their first game since coming back from the holiday break. Tied at 19. Watson looking inside. Good look to Westbelt. And had a whistle away from the ball. An offensive foul before the entry pass was made. So that waves off the basket. The foul was on Westbelt. Now that is a home court bounce. <laughs> Latham. The ball just died and then popped in the net. Watson misses. So Hidalgo did not start this quarter. She's going to come in off the bench. Hidalgo already with a fantastic opening quarter. And not surprising, comes out yelling at her teammates. She's a, a natural born leader, telling everybody where to go. And a little whistle as both teams go for that ball. Marshall gets called for the foul. It's going to turn it over to Syracuse. Mar Marshall, number 15 for Notre Dame. Here's that number 15 in honor of one of her high school coaches who passed away from cancer, Claire Drosh. Marshall's from Queens, New York. My family and friends here. Wooly. And a foul on DeWolf. DeWolf, player that really got going against Western Michigan before the break. Five threes, had 17 points. Wooly was honored before the game for her 1,000th point. Her parents and sister are here. She's from Australia, from the Brisbane area of Australia. There they are, in front of your screen. Yeah, how so nice to be able have... to spend the holidays with your family, especially coming from overseas. Yeah, first time they've been able to come over and watch her play at Syracuse. Of course, Willie came from Buffalo, played for Coach Jack there. And, uh, and Willie, she's such a versatile player. You forget how tall she is. And Hidalgo gets around her nicely, though, and puts in the, the jumper. Yeah, Hidalgo knows she has the speed advantage, so I like that. No ball screen. She knows that she can get by Wooly off the bounce. Perkins. Nice. Wooly trying to run down the offensive rebound, but you know Hidalgo is going to grab it. Hidalgo will push. Two on one. She keeps it. And Hidalgo goes down, a little slow to get up on the other end. So it's five on four. And Hidalgo runs back in. That's a sigh of relief for Notre Dame. Hidalgo dives for that ball. Marshall against Fair. And a foul late coming over was Wilson. Take another look at him. Marshall is headed here. And then a foul call there. And I will say this, you know, for Syracuse, when you have a player like Hill Dog on the floor, you cannot afford being too loose with the ball and then on the other end, you know, get the foul. Doggo already with four steals. Marshall's on the free throw line. 10 of 17 this year from the free throw line. That one looks good. Right, here we go. We got one left. Marshall. One. 
6'5". This has been like the best season of her career at Notre Dame. She's been at Notre Dame all four years. And makes both free throws to pull Notre Dame back to within a point. ACC opener for both teams and part of our quadruple header today in women's basketball. Perkins, and she's quick. Good pass. And Fair, the beneficiary. And so shifty and so creative, Perkins, creating for others. Trying to shake fair loose. Goes in with the left hand. Misses. Rebound by Wood. Another thing that I've noticed just from watching Notre Dame over the course of that time is I think one of the areas they really need to improve offensively is missing those bunnies inside. If you're in the paint, you got to get those. Well, De'Asia Fair had no trouble making that three, and she pushes the Syracuse lead to six. DeWolf. Short jumper is good. Wolf, like another coach on the floor, Coach Ivy was telling. She calls her Coach DeWolf, in fact. Good take by Rice. Oh, that's nice. And Syracuse answering, and DeWolf, last two times down the floor, has made the jumper. It has just been back and forth. I love this score. We talked about it. If you love offense, you'll love this game. Not fair. Oh, that was just off the mark. Wood came flying in and eventually draws the foul on Bransford. Well, this Notre Dame team moved up to 13 in the AP rankings this week. Syracuse receiving votes. But if you look at the net, which is one of those key indicators the committee uses to select the teams for the tournament, they're number five. They're the highest rated team in the ACC in the net. Fair. And Hidalgo with a rebound. And Marshall offensive foul. And Marshall going out two players, but you got to have some body control there. But Hildago here, this is what she does. She pushes up the court, but then we see Marshall here. Not a good look there. She should have kicked that out, and you have to have body control going in, but that's a great defensive stop there by Perkins. Marshall heads to the bench, two fouls now. Hildago comes over to get fair. not had even close to a shot clock violation in this game. They've been scoring or shooting so quickly on the offensive. And the first time I can remember the shot clock getting down to five. At three. Wilson swatted out of bounds by Watson, but not before the shot clock expired. That is ironically the first shot clock violation we've had just after I mentioned we hadn't had any. <laughs> I mean, shot clock oh. violation, but hey, we're still going to look at oh. Watson. How about it with the volleyball slot? She's like, please, come on, I want that block. <laughs> A lot of turnovers in this game, though, but these teams trying to figure the other out. Watson posting up, and a jump ball. How about that D by Wood? Wow. We on both ends. Both ends, and... Here we go, we see Wood here. First of all, great foot movement. And then you talk about getting her hand all on the ball, getting that stop. But I got that's, you too, Watson. That's an incredibly skilled play to just have the control to get just your hand on that ball like that and the strength to hold it on. Offensive rebound and a foul. It was Latham who grabbed the rebound and was fouled on the way up. So we will have a free throw when we come back on the other side of this break. This is an intense ACC opener in Syracuse up four on Notre Dame. You might have heard some things about Liberty University. Well, just, I mean, I don't even know how to continue to describe her, Asia. You just have to watch and see. Yeah, absolutely. You just have to watch and see. And she's just a fun player to watch. And 
you know, I love a two-way player, one that gets it done on both ends of the floor. She's just a workhorse. She's humble, but she works hard. Well, Bema had committed the foul just going into that timeout. Doggo, obviously, right now playing in the, the shadow of Caitlin Clark. The night she had the triple-double, Caitlin Clark also had one, so Caitlin got a, a few more of the headlines, but the Doggo was, got snuck into Sports Center as well. We've already seen her tonight get four steals, 11 points, and she's on the way to the basket, blocked. Yeah, we'll see Hannah the next time use that ball screen. Ransford leading the break, bobbles it. The doggo popped out, shoots the three. Ransford with the offensive rebound and another jump ball called. No foul. Notre Dame will keep it. Boy, Wood is so good tying people up. I was going to say, Wood's doing a great job shutting that paint down, taking away second chance opportunities, <laughs> but specifically just with her blocks, tying the ball up. Doggo telling Bransford to go. Love it. You know, Ivy telling us that the team says, we want to play as hard as Hannah plays. She's got the upperclassmen's attention. Shot off the mark, and Wood wrestles away the rebound. Yeah, Wood again. I mean, you got to love that, but they're absolutely shutting the paint down. It's going to stay with Syracuse. Bransford arguing that it was Syracuse who touched it last. Fischl's not going to agree. Off the inbounds play. Shot missed by Latham. Here comes Hidalgo looking up the floor. Ransford. Assist by Hidalgo. And this is what Notre Dame exactly needs to do. They need to keep getting stops and then pushing. That's their game. Push and transition and finish on the other end. It's all good with two assists. Bransford now with four points. Doggo leads the game overall with 11 points. Three on the way off the mark by Woolley. And DeWolf, how about that? She got the rebound, maintained her dribble, but then eventually got tied up when she couldn't get up. Well, we got some men's basketball coming your way Saturday afternoon right here on ACC Network. It'll be our first triple header of the new year. Virginia will take on NC State to start us off at 2 Eastern. That'll be followed by Virginia Tech at Florida State. And then Duke will be in South Bend to take on Notre Dame at 6 Eastern. Again, those are men's games next Saturday. We're in the midst of a women's quadruple header today as Latham gets the short jumper. That was a great find to them on the cut, right under the basket into the paint. Bransford open for three, off the mark. Bransford has only made two threes this season, but it was open. The Doggo almost had another steal, but they do force a turnover. And then stolen right back by Fair. Fair inside the lane, short. To Wolf. All by herself. Assist to Dalgo. Nice to catch my breath for a second. It's just been so fast. The first half court set we've seen in a few possessions. Some of the fans might leave the strained necks having their head on the swivel. <laughs> it's like a tennis match. <laughs> exactly. uh, nice drive by Rice. Keeps going back and forth this game. It's so fun to watch. The dog goes streaking through. Gets rid of it to Bransford. And Bransford missing the layup, but will go to the line. She's fouled. Layups, that's what you need. You got to make those layups, but I'll take it. Good. Have that opportunity to go to the free throw line. And how about the pass there by Hildago? Yeah. It's Perkins coming back in it. I have already come to appreciate just what a leader Hidalgo is. She is constantly screaming at her teammates in a way that they respond, not out of anger. Just has no problem stepping up and telling people where they need to be. No, exactly. That's tough as a freshman to do. 
you know, coming into a program and you're the rookie, you know, you're not as experienced. Yes, she's running the team, but at the same time, you're telling the vets what to do. But that's just how who Hannah is. That's how she's always been. Like I said, since she was younger. Nice free throws by Bransford. She's only missed five all season. And Bransford, beneficiary of the Hidalgo pass to set up those free throws. Fair. Off the mark on the jumper. Runs in, gets her miss, and sticks it in. How about that? Yeah, I think she knew the shot was off. So she ran right after the rebound. But you got to love the effort. Textbook, follow your shot. West Bell getting the pass from Hidalgo. So Hidalgo now with four assists, five steals, 11 points. And no one there to catch that pass. Notre Dame will get it back. A lot of turnovers for Notre Dame. That's been the one negative for the Orange, even though they've, for the most part, maintained a lead in this opening half. They've turned it over 14 times. That is the season average for Notre Dame, actually. Wolf. West Bell. She's got range and knocks it down. Three pointer by West Bell. Yeah, West Bell. She's been working a lot in the offseason. Actually, throughout the course of her career with Carlos Knox, the uh, player development coach for Notre Dame, to the point where she's confident, she's comfortable, and she's mentally in a great place coming into this season. That was her ninth three of the season. Adalgo harassing Fair, going for the steal. Fair. That was you just got to love the intensity of that play. Wow. Two of the best in the nation going head to head, literally. Watch this. Yeah, we got the OG and we got the baby here going at it. And listen, no let ups at all. And I love it. I love the intensity that both <laughs> Adalgo and Fair are playing with. I mean, this is just so exciting. Um. It's the six hell ball of the game, too, Asia. What does that tell you? I mean, that tells you how hard they're working, how tough they're playing, how physical this game is. Hidalgo misses that jumper. Watson with the offensive rebound. That's an area that Notre Dame's dramatically improved in this season. Offensive rebound, and Coach Ivy saying the, the post seems to have a, a new attitude this year. Fair picks Hidalgo's pocket and gets the layup. Yeah, you know, Fair's like, if you, you're you going to pick me, guess what? I'm going to pick you right back. <laughs> oh, this is great. DeWolf. And a travel as uh, Bransford took an extra step trying to get to the basket quickly. Well, the JMA Wireless Dome went berserk when Fair got that steal on the layup, and they are just now settling down. That was a, a momentum builder for Syracuse as we get ready to end the first half. Absolutely. I think they're just even more excited just to watch these two go at it. Fair gets by Adalgo again. Fair! Sending a message. Scoring. Yeah, both these teams with just one loss this season. It's the ACC opener for both. Notre Dame lost their opener in France to South Carolina, but the held South Carolina to... Uh, much below their season average scoring. And the first shot of the quarter is good by Latham, and Syracuse builds the lead to six. Yeah, that was just a pretty fadeaway jumper. So much potential, you know, in her game. She's got a little skill set there. Lots to polish off, but, I mean, again, just a freshman. Nice pass from Westbelt into Watson for the layup. Both teams scoring on their opening possession. Woolley. Keeps that streak going. Syracuse two for two to open the half. Syracuse just continues to get, you know, Syracuse just continue to get easy looks driving to the basket. So Notre Dame got to do a better job defensively, keeping out the paint. Fouls on Latham, and uh, Notre Dame will be at the free throw line now. Specifically, it'll be Watson. Watson who started her career at Oregon and her second season at Notre Dame. Enjoying the, the highest scoring average of her career. Eight points a game this year. And she was on our Team USA three-on-three -three team back in 2021. 
That always tells me a player is really good away from the ball. DeWolf with the steal and the layup. And DeWolf trying to turn the momentum around to Notre Dame's favor. And I love that. We talk about Hidalgo, but Wolf, too, she's another one that gets her hands in there. She just completely anticipated that pass and got after it. You know, DeWolf in her 121st start tonight over her career. Nice look inside, and Wood with the finish. And a lot of those drop passes, that's what the bigs and cues, that's what they've been getting. And Westfield there, you got to be there early. You got to be in front of Wood. You got to be the help the helper. And Syracuse shooting 50% in this game. Notre Dame not far behind at 47%. Watson on the block, kicks it back out to DeWolf, makes sure she's on the three line, misses. Westbell with the offensive rebound. And another jump ball. Seventh of the game in terms of held balls. I don't think Westbell realized how open she was. Westbell off the inbounds play. And an offensive foul on Westbell. Have another look at it here. Westfield on the baseline attack. Yeah, I think that's good. That's great position there by Wood. As Wood came in, took the charge. Third foul on Westfield. First player to have three fouls. We're just starting the third quarter. A lot of offense already here in the first two minutes. Fair launches the three from deep. Offensive rebound. Grabbed by Rice, and then the turnover gives it back to Notre Dame. When you talk about the foul, Sam, that Notre Dame is ragging up, that they've racked up in the first uh, half, and now we're in the third quarter. That's something to keep an eye on because they don't have the depth. They can't afford that. Marshall, who was inserted into the lineup for Westbelt, makes the most of the opportunity, gets the layup. The doggo diving to the floor for another steal. DeWolf forced the pass. Doggo now with seven steals in the game, five assists, 11 points. Getting closer and closer to a triple-double. Ransford picks it up. Here's DeWolf. Wolf misses the layup. Adago and one. Grab the rebound. I love the celebration every time. The celebration gets me. But how about it here? It's still here. Then Adago getting it on the glass. I love it. Five, six. All five, six of her getting up on the glass. Then gets the and one. I love it. The excitement. Well, and, and like another former Notre Dame point guard, Neil Ivy, her celebration was about as intense as Hidalgo's. <laughs> they, were, they were both jumping up with their fists in the air. And Hidalgo's mom here, yeah, Tamara likes it. How, how was she as a coach, Asia, when she coached you? Oh, she was very, very hyped, hyped you up. She was kind of like, she knows she reminds me of, she kind of reminded me of, um, Coach Yao from uh, Ole Miss, like just that coach that gets super <laughs> fired Yo. up, like a Kim Mulkey. All those coaches that really get fired up and it just, yeah. you know, it exuberates throughout the entire team, gives you that energy. Uh, her dad, Orlando, high school coach. Mom also coaches as well. Fair, trying to break the Notre Dame momentum. Notre Dame scored 11, excuse me, nine of the last 11 points, maybe adding to it here, the Wolf. Off the mark, and Marshall was open. That's a good play by Fair. That was a wide open layup, and she not gotten her hand on it. And usually the loudest voice you hear is Hidalgo. Hidalgo off the dribble. Hidalgo now with 14 points, seven steals, four rebounds, five assists. And another turnover. <laughs> Coach Jack, whose jersey hangs in the rafters here, trying to get this team to grab the momentum back. Notre Dame's overcome the deficit, now has a one-point lead with a chance to build. Transfer through a double team, misses. 
He's trying to make the most of this turnover. They've been turning it over more often than not here in the second half. Five turnovers for Syracuse in the opening nine possessions. Fair. Done it all by herself. Missed. Offensive rebound. Thrown back out to Perkins. Three on the way, and it's good by Rice. Yeah, that's just textbook capitalizing off that second chance opportunity. Starting with the rebound, that's a great kick out in Rice. We know she's a capable shooter, so that's a great way to step up and knock down the bucket. Or excuse me, the three. Hidalgo will not get the basket. She was fouled before she drove down the lane. And so it'll just be Notre Dame's ball out of bounds. Westbell returns. She has three fouls, remember. And that foul was on Latham fouling Hidalgo. So it'll be Notre Dame's ball out of bounds. Hidalgo, quick lob out to Westbell. DeWolf defended by Fair. Can't get the roll. The ball will stay with Notre Dame, but the, and the shot clock resets. And the LI, it, it's fun watching her on the sidelines. I, I feel like sometimes she's still a player out there. Both the head coaches of these teams among the all time greats at their schools. Westbelt for three. That's her second one of the game. Big momentum play there for Westbelt. She she has that capability. We know she can knock down shots. So for Cues, you gotta you gotta have your eye on it. Don't give her an easy open look. Yeah, she had eight threes coming into the game for the season. She's already had two here. Notre Dame has taken the lead, overcoming the deficit at halftime. Perkins misses that, and Hidalgo grabs it. Hidalgo sends it the length of the floor. Nice give and go. And then a foul on the rebound. Foul will be on Marshall. She's upset they didn't score there. So we will take a break in this high-intensity ACC opener between Notre Dame and Syracuse. Younger sister at that, and she's getting buckets and doing her thing on the middle school team. And there's her mama, Tamara, and Coach Ivy was saying that her brothers never took it easy on him. They, they went all out against her. That's one of the reasons Coach Ivy thinks she's so tough, plays with that edge. Nice opening possession out of the timeout for Syracuse as Latham gets the layup to retake the lead for Syracuse. Hidalgo quickly answers. 16 points for Hidalgo. Lightning fast response. It has been a battle between these two in this ACC opener. Jumper off the mark, offensive rebound taken inside and stuck back up and in. That was Wilson. Hidalgo gets around the D, misses the shot. And a travel. Notre Dame will keep it. Well, while we have a moment, a reminder that ACC PM with Mark Packer and Taylor Tannenbaum comes your way every day from Mark Charlotte's studio in his basement all the weekdays at 4 Eastern. They'll continue talking football, basketball, plus half the latest from around the conference right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Fair against DeWolf. DeWolf doesn't foul. Fair knocks it down easily. Also, that crossover from left to right. Uh, a lot of highlights in this game. Just some spectacular playmaking. Hidalgo open for three. Off the mark, rebound Syracuse. The Orange with a three point lead now, looking to increase it. Westbell grabs the miss. Shot had been taken by Rice. Here comes Hidalgo. 
DeWolf buries the three. And that's a great job, great um, read by Notre Dame there, corralling the ball in the backcourt. So what do you do? You push it up when you have numbers, opening them, opening up that opportunity on the three. Right. DeWolf made five threes against Western Michigan. That was her first today. Tied at 57, good look inside, wide open was Latham. Yeah, this is what Notre Dame has been struggling with the entire game defensively, is that secondary line defense, that help the helper. You have to be on the backside for that drop off. Hidalgo, you may not have been able to see her, but she put that in. Mm. <laughs> that is one of the things we really haven't talked about. She's only 5'6", and fair, Syracuse's star, only 5'5". Five, five. Here's Fair, launching the three. Partially blocked. The Wolf, nice touch pass. And the Doggo eventually can't save it. The Doggo uh, catching her breath. Just trying to hustle, get the ball dives for it. Yeah, it goes down pretty hard. Have another look here. Yeah, it looks like she, yep, she hit her jaw right there on her left arm going out. Mm. And Doggo's going to get a breather. You can tell she didn't want to come out. <laughs> yeah, but I think the rest is good, you know, because... Syracuse, they have the depth, and you know they want to push and run it, run it up the court to Notre Dame. Any chance that you can to just get a breather as they're about to go into the fourth quarter. Is needed. Perkins muscled it up and in, and Syracuse leading by a bucket. We get ready to approach the final minute of the third quarter. Back and forth game. Watson looking low to West Bell. West Bell. Taking the pass from Watson and putting it in. And I love that look. It's been there for West Bell the entire game. And Watson having the size that she has, able to not only see it, but throw it over as well. West Bell with 12 points. And an offensive foul on Latham. Look, oh, yeah. The extension of the arm. That's where they got him on the offensive foul for Latham. Took that charge. The Wolf trying to get away from Fair. Gives it up to Watson. And the Wolf was open underneath. And it was Watson who has the assist. The Wolf now with 15 points. Less than a second between the game clock and the shot clock here at the end of the third quarter. Woolley. Fair with seven to play in the quarter. Tried to rifle it inside and just could not thread the needle. And the foul called on Latham as she attempted to catch that entry pass. Well, there's been so many positive things to talk about in this game, Asia, but we have had 40 turnovers. Yeah. 40 turnovers, and the turnovers are, you know, very key in this game. you got to clean the ball up. That's, it's been so back and forth, so fast-paced. So I think you just got to stay poised, make the right reads, make the right passes, don't rush it. And that's on both ends. That foul was on Latham. That was her fourth. So Coach Jack taking her out of the game. West Bell made the first free throw. Knocks down the second as well. She's only missed five free throws all season. And West Bell... With 14 points now. Obinma back in the game for the Irish. And the heave off the back of the rim. Notre Dame ends the third quarter on a 6-0 run. They trailed at halftime, but the Irish up four, heading into the final 10 minutes of the game. She's a bit dainty and she isn't strong yet. And Coach, Coach Jack said, hey, I can work with that. And I mean, you yeah. see Willie, look how far she's come in her career. And Willie's a, a six-footer. Turnover, travel, give it to Notre Dame. 
A lot of good basketball players from Australia. Hidalgo. Notre Dame trying to win on the road at Syracuse. Syracuse, though, has made this very difficult for the Irish, who are 13th in the rankings this week. And another steal. Fair comes out of there with it. Up to Florida Woolley. Woolley faked the jumper. Fair could not get around Bransford. Woolley doesn't get the roll. Offensive rebound and stick back by Wood, though. Hidalgo right now, 18 points, seven steals, six assists, five rebounds. Hidalgo, nice take. Okay, well, frustrated she didn't make that shot. So Hidalgo needs three more steals for the double-double. She had two steals in the first two minutes of the game. Here's the quadruple double watch. I got to get used to saying that, especially when I do Notre Dame games. <laughs> You see your Notre Dame zone, Sam. Yeah. Switching it up, packing up the paint, not allowing that drive, not just the penetration, but that drop pass as well. Steal by Fair. Doggo turned it over. Fair with the lob into Wood. And Wood with another paint bucket for the Orange. Timeout, Notre Dame. I mean, what a game that Wood has had so far. But Syracuse starts here fair with the steal. And then the bucket here from Wood. I'm loving it from the Orange. ACC Women's College Basketball is presented by Food Lion, the official grocer of the ACC. And a reminder, uh, we're not done with ACC Women's Basketball after this one. A couple more games coming up in our quadruple header. We will have Louisville taking on Miami. And then we will cap the evening with NC State and Virginia. Happy New Year, everyone, on this New Year's Eve. It's the first full opening day of play in ACC women's basketball. Notre Dame trying to steal this one on the road. But Syracuse has made that very much in question. We're tied. We've had nine ties in this game, nine lead changes. This has been a tight one, Asia. It's been a tight one, but a fun one. A fun one for us, a fun one for the fans. Probably a nail-biting one for the players, maybe, and some of the coaches. But the key is the state boys. And, you know, down the stretch, you wonder how much experience is going to come into play, as well as depth, because the pace is in favor of Syracuse right now. Pichalgo weaving her way up the floor against Woolley. Westbell gets rid of it to DeWolf. Watson has her pass broken up. Willie comes away with it. Good D again by Syracuse. Turnovers have been an issue for both teams in this game. 24 turnovers for Syracuse, 20 for Notre Dame. And another held ball. It'll go the other way. is about what you'd expect. These two teams play so similar to each other. Remember Notre Dame still without Miles, Citron, Prosper, and Rich, But yet they've only managed to lose one game. You know, Ivy admitted she really feels like the adversity they've been through is going to eventually benefit them because so many players whose minutes may have been limited with those others in the lineup have gotten considerable minutes and gotten used to being dependent on. Them. 
Bear, one-on-one with Hidalgo, gives it up. Woolley gets the roll. Yeah, Notre Dame switched back to a man-to-man defense there, but that's sort of where they struggled, was keeping the players of the orange in front of them. Woolley now into double figures with 10 points. Syracuse, more importantly, with the lead. And then a touch foul by Woolley. As Hidalgo got around her. Marshall coming back in for the Irish. Let's go. Double team and tied up. And that'll turn it over to Syracuse. And I love it. And, you know, we talked about it all games. Syracuse, they switch up their defense. They switch up their looks, whether they're trapping, what they're doing off the ball screens, man, zone, junk. Things that can really disrupt the rhythm of a team. That's a great point. I, I've never felt Notre Dame's been in rhythm in this game. They may end up winning the game, but it's you're right. Syracuse is disruptive. No, absolutely. The only time they are in rhythm is in transition. Foul out, away from the ball. Fouls on Hidalgo. Wood loses it. Watson goes to the floor to get it, finds Hidalgo. A great defensive possession. Hidalgo with the layup. 20 points for Hidalgo. Yeah, great defense off, and notice the defense kept switching up. They switched up from man, now back in that zone. And the zone has really helped, as you've seen West Bell there. Ooh, that's Not allowing four. that drop pass. Fourth foul on West Bell. Yeah, that's huge. Ransford coming in. Just a drive and drop in. West Bell did get there, but the, but again, a little too late. You got to be down there early. You do your work early. You avoid getting the foul call. Wilson on the ACC all-academic team. Back at the free throw line. She had made her first two tonight. Missed that one. Wilson with six points tonight. Three rebounds. Comes in off the bench, averaging seven a game this year. So Westfeld out of the game for Notre Dame with four fouls. Latham is back in for Syracuse with four fouls. Latham, number 23 in white. Marshall turns, shoots, misses. Ball stay with Notre Dame. Last touch by Wilson. This is not a popular call. Let's take another, well, let to see if that was out on her or not. Not going to matter. Steal by Fair. Woolley. Perkins grabs the rebound. Well, how about Fair? She had the steal, had the pass, and then got the, got the tip to allow that extra possession. Just short on that three. So Notre Dame can retake the lead on this possession. Hidalgo splits the defense, rifles in the pass, but it is blocked by Latham. Perkins goes around the screen. Watson, a little fired up down there. Well, there has been no shortage of intensity and passion in this game. No, absolutely. Lots of passion, lots of emotion, lots of fire. But we love to see it in this tight game. After our women's basketball doubleheader, the Nothing But Net crew will break down the night in the ACC with highlights and analysis of every women's game. 
We'll also be looking ahead at the best matchups on the schedule in the coming week. That's coverage you can find only here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. And we have got an outstanding ACC opener that I'm sure they'll talk about Thursday night between Notre Dame and Syracuse. The Orange right now up one. Notre Dame with the ball. Both teams with three players in double figures scoring. Here's the leading scores. Like under 10. That's a rarity in this game. And a forced pass by Marshall Hidalgo, though. Bails Notre Dame out. And a turnover. Syracuse comes up with it. Woolley knocked away by DeWolf. What a defensive play by DeWolf. No foul. And Hidalgo slow to get up. Right in Marshall's face. Well, the ball went down and fair immediately. Syracuse, they had none was fair to hit it. Syracuse grabbing some momentum. So you're looking for a university that has anything you could possibly need. Anything? You want a place that has the programs you want to study. A place with state-of-the-art facilities. And all that with a great view. Yeah. I think I know a place. NBA Wednesday on ABC. A new night every Wednesday in January. The league's biggest teams. The game's brightest stars. NBA Wednesday tips off this Wednesday on ABC. We had to go to break quickly, but this was the last sequence here. Fair sends the pass down to Willie. And look at this steal by DeWolf. Knock that away. And then on the other end, Hidalgo got stuck. That pass got away from Bransford. And here comes Fair. Fair. No problem. Honestly, this is what we've been seeing all game. This back and forth tempo. It's like you can't let your foot off the gas. You make one play on the other end, but then a play is made on the on the opposite end. And it's been a great game. Notre Dame was up 65-61 to end the quarter. And here in the fourth quarter, Syracuse has outscored Notre Dame 10 to four. Still a two point lead for the Orange. And foul on Bransford as Willie got a rounder. Notre Dame in the preseason poll this year picked to finish second. Syracuse was picked to finish ninth. Not the pass, no good. Perkins with the offensive rebound, missed. And then another follow is made by Rice. I like the zone look from Notre Dame, but when you're in the zone, you know, you're more at a disadvantage rebounding wise. So you really got to lock in and focus on that. But Rice, a guard with legs. She's the rebounding guard for Syracuse. So you got to know where she is. A four-point lead for the Orange. Short is Branford's shot. And it'll go back to Syracuse. The Orange building some momentum here as we head toward the final two minutes. They have never beaten Notre Dame when Notre Dame was ranked. And Notre Dame comes into the game this week 13th up a spot, then a five in the net. Perkins trying to get by DeWolf. Shot clock at 10, Woolley launches the three. Westbelt with four fouls, grabs the rebound. Hidalgo. Through the lane, yes! And Fair answers with the three. The two from Hidalgo and the three from Fair. One thing happens on the other end, you can't take your foot off the gas, but I love it, the back and forth. Hidalgo, Fair, the two superstars, late in game, coming in clutch. 
So Hidalgo started this with the layup. And then within a matter of seconds, Fair answers with this three. And it puts Syracuse up five. Here's the reaction from Coach Jack. <laughs> <laughs> It, it is interesting. We, we talked about the contrast in styles between Fair and Hidalgo and, and then the accomplishments of the head coaches. They're a lot similar in that way. Neil Ivey's so emotional and Coach Jack is a lot more reserved. Westfeld. Notre Dame trailing by five. Iris have only lost one game all season. That was to South Carolina. Wood with the rebound. Woolley brings it back out. Fair, another three. Got it! DeAsia Fair is taking this game over. A <laughs> premier score. And Hidalgo answers on the other end, and one. A premier score in the league, and we know she can knock it down, and I love it. Off of the bounce, shoots it, bam, got it. And then you have the answer by Hannah Hidalgo on the other end. Latham has just fouled out. Fair scored nine of Syracuse's last 11 points. Hidalgo on the free throw line. 24 points today, make it 25. Syracuse going for the upset here in the ACC opener for both. Up five, and now a minute to play. Perkins to Woolley. In and out, rebound Watson. And Watson throws it away to Fair. Fair. Offensive rebound and one. Foul on Watson. for Syracuse, and we have another look at it. The shot goes up. I mean, how about, first of all, the block out from Wood underneath, but then I love it here. The and one, the bucket from Perkins, and the bench, the bench loves it too. <laughs> Perkins on the line, sophomore from Illinois. Misses the free throw. Hidalgo will push it for the Irish. Hidalgo, all by herself. Cuts the lead to five, 32.3 seconds left. And Fair fouled right away by Hidalgo. Deasia Fair, 22 points this afternoon. She'll be at the free throw line for the first time, however. Fair this season. A 90% free throw shooter. Trying to make it a two possession game. And now we'll try to make it a three possession game. That's her dad. Eleven points this quarter for Fair. Timeout, Notre Dame. Yeah, Notre Dame looking to advance the ball. They're going to need to get a quick shot on the offensive end foul, and then you know, try to get the ball back. Seven-point lead for Syracuse with 31.6 seconds. Notre Dame this season has been out-rebounded. That's a, a big key to Notre Dame's success. Remember to talked about how improved they were in that category. For some reason, Asia, you touched on it earlier. 
Syracuse has just been able to disrupt everything Notre Dame has done so smoothly to this point in the season. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, getting on the glass, it all starts with the effort. And the bigs are doing a great job. You have Wood in there, you know, securing rebounds. Latham, she's got 12. So you look at yeah. that, really getting in there, getting on the glass, and then you talk about disrupting Notre Dame's office. The majority of the times that Notre Dame has come up and had to set up at a half court, Syracuse has switched up their defense, which has been really disruptive, especially when you have a freshman point guard for Notre Dame who's, run, who's running the show. She's not used to seeing this. So it has just been very disruptive in the in show. Yeah, Latham uh, fouled out, but she had 21 points and 12 rebounds, the only player in the game with the double-double, excuse me, West Bell double-double today with 16 points, 10 rebounds for Notre Dame. But even Hannah Hidalgo's 27 points has not been able to give Notre Dame the lead. Syracuse up seven with just over 30 seconds to play. Hidalgo quickly into the lane, misses. Wood with a rebound. Notre Dame has to foul. Bransford will foul fair and put her on the line with 24.2 to play. Yeah, that's a tough miss, and those are the gimmies that I'm talking about under the basket. Notre Dame has struggled all season long, just, you know, missing layups under the basket. And, you know, that's huge, specifically in that possession. Syracuse has shot the ball well today, 48% from the field. It's only the 13th free throw, though. And a 9 of 13 from the free throw line, fair with one more to shoot to try to continue to distance Syracuse from Notre Dame. Nine point lead, biggest of the day for the Orange. Notre Dame has to score quick. Hidalgo into the lane, puts it in. 16 seconds left. Fair with the ball, they've got a fouler, no choice. It stops the clock with 11.8, but Fair's been automatic from the free throw line. Yeah, you're gonna foul, you gotta foul right away. You can't try not to eat up as much clock as possible. Fair padding her stats. She's up to 26 points now, four or four from the free throw line. All four of those free throws have been in the last couple of minutes. Missed it. Hey, one time. Straight. One. 13 points this quarter. That is a rare miss for Fair from the free throw line. Eight point lead for Syracuse. Under 10 seconds to play. And the Orange are going to get the upset to open ACC play. Hidalgo buries the three. That makes it a five-point game, but that's not going to do anything except make the deficit smaller. What 